Look, the show is cute, and sometimes that's all you need to be. Hey, it's Ali. Welcome and welcome back to my channel, and I'm here to discuss Sonic Prime Season 3, what is probably, most likely, the final season of Sonic Prime for now. And for this, I just want to go episode by episode. I have a lot to say. Namely, I felt like this may have dragged on just a little bit too much maybe like an episode or two too much i feel like they were told you have eight episodes seven episodes you have seven episodes it felt like eight and you need to do something with them and this entire season was just one long battle i feel like we could have condensed it a little bit down but it was cute nonetheless and the fighting choreography was really good so let's jump into it if at any time you like this video please give it a like and subscribe because i make videos like this all the time and comment down below how you felt about the season how you felt about the show as a whole what do you think we should go next as like Sonic lore and Sonic franchising, I guess. <laughs> and let's jump into it. So right off the bat, we have Nine, who is this New York City's version of Tails, who is still adorable. Like Nine is like a villain in this season. And well, I guess technically throughout the entire show, but specifically in this season. And he's just still so cute. Like all of his little mannerisms with his robots and his hair and everything. It's just so cute. Every time I saw him, I'm like, you're so adorable. I would not be able to take you seriously. You are so adorable. Um, but he is acting a lot like Eggman, no? <laughs> Which is something that you often hear and see a lot with Tails throughout different Sonic franchises. Is the fact that Tails and Eggman are kind of on the same level, at least intelligence wise. And so because of that, oftentimes whenever Tails defects because because he doesn't feel like he's being appreciated. He usually ends up on Eggman's side, whether through manipulation by Eggman or by his own actions, like in Sonic Boom. <laughs> so it was actually nice to see in this show that Tails, or Nine in this case, actually has his own reasons for like kind of defacting away from Sonic. But in that, we still see these direct parallels to the Egg Council. And I wish Sonic would have said it <laughs> because he's literally making his own city, his own universe, which is exactly what Eggman and the Egg Council wanted to do so i wish sonic would have made that little connection there and been like hey you know you're acting a lot like eggman right now and i feel like that would have kind of got under his skin because at some point he does relate to the egg council being all like oh yeah they tracked you down that's what i would have done it's like you just casually say that okay okay dude okay and of course sonic with the maybe i can reason with him and shadow's over there like um okay girl and let me tell you we need more shadow and everything now like absolutely now this is the first time in like years literal years that we have gotten this much shadow content it's crazy and they did a really good job the voice acting and the characterization i'll get into this later but all the little shadow mannerisms and act oh i love it so much and then of course he falls down a hole and we don't get to see him for a couple of episodes <laughs> Okay. Now, I will say, despite the fact that this show did kind of drag on a little bit, like literally some of the plot points that I have on each of these episodes are no more than like a couple of bullet points long. And that is because I felt like some of these fights were dragged out a little bit. You'll see when I talk about like in the next coming episodes, like it's literally we try to do a plan, we execute said plan, we either fail or succeed at said plan, and then we're back to square one. And they do that like three to four times. And by the time we get to the last time, I'm like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta. I feel like they were having a hard time keeping it fresh and new. Like they had the really big points that they wanted to like get to, which we'll get to, but the filler in between those really big points in the battle, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? However, I will say the trade-off for that is we got really good fight sequences. I said this in the last video and probably the first video I made about Sonic Prime is that the fight sequences are probably the best part of this show, like just hands down. It's entertaining to watch. It actually makes sense. I think sometimes animators can go a little crazy with the VFX. I love a good VFX, okay? I am a weeb. I watch I watch anime, okay? And VFX VFX be holding the girlies down, okay? But sometimes it can be really hard to see what the hell is going on when there is so much VFX going on? And in this show actually had such lack of a VFX. Like, I feel like all the VFX budget went to when Tails was doing the little uh, lightning thing because that looked really, really cool. But there was no VFX anywhere else. I know this is sound really technical and nitpicky right now, but stick with me here. But because of that, I was able to see very clearly every single fight that the characters were having. Every single action that Sonic was doing, that uh, Shadow was doing. And if I ever felt like, oh, what just happened there? I would just roll back, play it, and I could see what happened. I didn't have to put it in 
0.5 speed or whatever the fuck to understand what was going on. <laughs> and I really like that. And I feel like that was a, I guess, a nice enough trade-off between my other thing that I don't really like about the show, which is the lack of, like, environmental stuff going on like there's not that much going on in the background now i understand this season takes place almost entirely in the shatter space which is quite literally nothing i don't i just felt like we could have had a little bit more nothing if that makes sense no it doesn't make sense so let me try to explain what i mean to say is like i feel like the background or the environment in general could have been more inclusive of what tails was trying to make because we never actually get to see the city world whatever that nine really wanted to make and i feel like if this battle had gone on while this world was constructing itself that could have looked very cool and it would have added a little bit more to the battles that kind of went on for a little bit too long i talk about this later but one of the reasons why I think the battles went on for too long is because we're looking at just a grand expanse of like nothingness and this whole fight is like going on. There's nothing interesting or dynamic going on in the fight because it's literally just a fight. It's like boxing, like you're watching people box and you can only watch people box for so long before it gets boring because they're just in a static area. Now throw a skyscraper in there or a constantly changing landscape because of what Nine is trying to build and I think that would have been a lot more interesting. But if the trade-off for that is really good fight choreography and we get to focus on the fight choreography, I'm fine with it. Yeah, so episode two, I only have a couple things here, which is Tails is on his Blade Runner 2049 shit because he was like appearing in the sky and Knuckles with the Brooklyn accent is back. That was the highlight of that episode. <laughs> Knuckles with the Brooklyn accent is back he's back baby <laughs> so in episode three i guess i should recap the plot as well sonic decides that he's going to team up with the egg council as well as everybody else to try and save their world because at this point they all have one common goal one common enemy which is nine and of course tensions friction they don't get along at first whatever there is a point though where sonic is frustrated with losing because he's been losing this entire time and he's asked the egg council how do you guys do it how do you guys lose all the time very funny joke and then the egg council goes we don't lose we just learn from our mistakes which is like cute little you know lesson to teach the kids however <laughs> you do lose like all you do is lose like you never win and even if you win like you will always be losing and so i feel like having the egg council be the ones to just be like we learn from our mistakes we get up and we try again blah 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 blah, blah. is so such a nice little lesson for kids to learn however coming from the egg council who will always lose it, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was cute though. So again, the, the theme of this is that it was cute. So who cares? Also nine read Sonic for filth multiple times throughout the show. But this last time he did it. Oh, he said, you only do this because you feel bad that you caused everything to happen. And was he wrong? No, because Sonic didn't even refute it. He was just like, well, you got me there. You got me there. Which I love this characterization of Sonic. Let me tell you, Sonic with the guilty conscience. Oh, Oh, I love it. Now I will say I love when Sonic franchises do this, when they give Sonic that peak, peak guilt characterization. I love it. I love it. If we mix that with the Archie attitude of Sonic, oh, the Archie Sonic attitude, babes, and the Archie Sonic powers, oh, we'd have literally the best Sonic. We'd have the best well-rounded Sonic character. Somebody needs to get on that. So this was a part of episode four. Um, and how did Mangy and Sales, you know, the other alternate versions of Tails, learn robotics so quickly? Like, I think Sales makes sense because I think Sales was tinkering with stuff during those episodes with the crew. But Mangy? <laughs> Unless I missed something, which I really could have. These seasons came out a long time ago. My brain, goldfish, Gen Z brain over here. Uh, I may have missed it. But when did Mangy start messing around with, like, technology and stuff to the point where they know how to do it very well? Like, very, very well, to the point where it becomes a very titular thing. At the end of this, they, like, throw a little bomb thing and they disappear. They come back at the end of the season. But, like, when do they learn how to do that? Which gives me to my no next thing. There are certain points in the battle it really seemed like they wanted to show. And that made sense for the battle. Like, Mangy and Sales doing their little thing and kind of turning the tides a little bit. Like, that was clearly a point they wanted to do. However, the getting to that part... And then the big robot that shows up and I forgot what episode it shows up in, but the big robot, literally the big, big robot uh, shows up. And there was just a lot of padding between that as well. 
I don't know. It's like they had these points that they wanted to make, but they had to get to those points and getting to those points was a real drag. So episode five, at this point, what they're fighting are these robots that uh, Nine made and they're all in the versions of the Sonic characters. So they have Sonic, Knuckles. I think there's a Shadow one at some point, unless that was just Sonic as well. A Sonic Shadow, I don't know. There's a Rouge one, there's an Amy one. There's even the bird thing that Amy has. It's cool. It looks really cool. I'm surprised there wasn't a Tails one. Noticeably, there were not any Tails ones. I think that was a really interesting little point there. Really interesting little point. However, these robots were annoying. They were annoying because it was the main thing that they were fighting. And like I said, with the whole making a plan, doing the plan, and then uh, failing at the plan and then having to restart, quite literally, multiple times, it was always those robots. And at some point, it just got stale having to fight the same robots over and over again and having them be supercharged and superpowered because they weren't really doing anything new, like the robots themselves. Like, it would be different if they were, like, weak at first and then they were learning and adapting to everybody's moveset and then that was something they had to deal with. But from what I can remember, again, Gen Z brain, um, they just completely were just fighting these robots and they just got stronger every time not really doing anything new with it so that i feel like that's where most of the drag came in like if there were different enemy types or maybe you started off with one character and then you slowly started adding the others I don't know. I just that part I feel like is the part that really weighed it down. Now I will say while this rinse and repeat can really get kind of grating on the nerves, I will say Sonic as a character did really well in this scenario because the whole point was that he wanted to just rush off fight nine head to head which is what nine was banking on and because of the, all the character development that he's gone through because the whole reason why we're in this mess is because he was really brash and like just doing things on his own and not listening now he's learned all of that stuff and he learns how to be patient and learn with his friends how to just trust them and trust the plan and trust the process that now he's not going to do that which frustrates nine a lot and makes sonic have this really nice character development throughout the entire season of of him literally stopping himself from going to fight nine and to the point where he even comes up with his own little plan in the end to trick nine which i thought was really nice because that showed his actual character development now again does it need to be grading to the audience no but it did show really good character development on sonic side also shadow comes back in episode five <laughs> and if i had a dollar for every subtle thing sonic and shadow do in this season i'd have a lot of dollars not one not two i'd have a lot i have a lot of dollars um whoever is in charge of like i guess character animations and like saying like oh yeah make make shadow's ears like twitch a little here and like concern make his eyes do a little ooh and concern over sonic here like what <laughs> i see you <laughs> like i i see you i see you because they didn't have to like if it was just gonna be like oh you're reading too much into it you're reading too much into it i'd be like yes if they were just like oh sonic is hugging shadow and that's it and shadow seems annoyed no it's the constant eye flick and the ear twitch that's just has me like who on the team do i gotta talk to logistically statistically one of y'all ships them and i i don't want to hear anything else <laughs> So episode six is when we find out that Sonic actually had a plan to go against nine. He still wants to try and talk him down throughout all of this, which I was like, we can punch his face and then talk him down later. <laughs> but uh, anyway, nine does bring up a good point in this where Sonic does apologize. Like, I'm sorry for hurting you. I just wanted to go home, blah, 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 blah. And Tails was like, I get it. But also you hurt me. You still hurt me, which I love. I love that when apologies are met with that in shows, because I feel like it's very important to teach children that just because someone apologizes to you, and even if they mean it, does not mean you have to accept their apology just because they hurt you and they apologize. I think we live in a day and age where people just feel like, oh, but I apologized. That makes everything better and just sweep it under the rug. No, babe. No, it doesn't. It doesn't erase the shit you've done. Mm -mm. Actions have consequences very random but dread comes up in this episode and he has a little lackey that's like dude we could go steal that big giant rock in the sky like right now and dude we'd be pirate kings pirate kings you say <laughs> i'm sorry i can't go one video without mentioning one piece it's been two it's been two actually <laughs> i've got two videos without mentioning one piece and i'm breaking out into hives one day I'll just make a One Piece video. Today's not that day. However, Pirate King. I think the Amys were the MVP of the season. I think they were my favorite characters, like, overall. 
you know, outside of Sonic and Shadow. They were my favorite characters overall because I feel like their characterization was just so good. And I am always here for good Amy representation, okay? I feel like she doesn't get enough. She does not get enough. She doesn't, she doesn't, she never gets enough. And I love that we are in a day and age where we're giving her more. We're giving her her flowers. We're giving her her just desserts. It's what she deserves. She's a queen and it is what she deserves. Sorry, I got that mixed up. Episode seven is when Sonic goes, I didn't mean to hurt you, but Tails goes, but you did. Either, I, I'm sorry, it like kind of all blends together after a while. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but that was episode seven. So we get to the uh, season finale, series finale for now, um, where at this point, Tails has realized that what he's trying to do is not working because he has to have all this power. Sonic has this like extra power piece that he needs, which is the reason why he wanted him this entire time. He realizes that even if he gets that, it's going to destroy everything. He should just stop while he's ahead. You can still have your own little world where you live alone, which like, we don't really talk about, we don't really talk about the fact that he's just like, yeah, I want to live alone and away from everybody in my own little special little bubble world, even though all the other worlds probably would have taken him in at some point, but he's just like, I want to live alone. And everyone's just like, okay, sure. I, I'm like, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I'm a little concerned, but I know, fine, maybe he can make artificial intelligence and now those will become his friends, I guess. I don't know. I'm a little concerned about Nine's like future after this show. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but yeah, so at this point, Sonic sacrifices himself because it's the only way. And he gets all of the, like, power sucked out of him, pretty much. All the worlds get reinstated, but now they have to make it across the void back to Green Hill Zone. And at this point, <laughs> they said, we're not going to give you not one, not two. But three different ships, we're gonna feed you. Cause first, they have Knuckles. The amount of times that Sonic has physically leaned on Knuckles and depended on Knuckles, I, <laughs> like that's ship number one. That's ship number one. Ship number two, Amy and Sonic. There's an Amy and Sonic moment that is actually really cute and really sweet that made me go, oh, okay, like, <laughs> I see what y'all doing there. I see what y'all doing there. And then of course, three after all of that, cause Amy takes Sonic about halfway and then they can't take Sonic anymore. And they're like, okay, what are we gonna do? And then Shadow comes up and is like, I guess I gotta take him the rest of the way. And so he tries to like, you know, hold him under his shoulder and like, you know, hop the rest of the way there. That doesn't work. So he just picks up Sonic Bridal style. You could have put him on your back, like piggyback ride. No, he picked him up Bridal style and they went the rest of the way. And of course, Sonic is sitting there flirting the entire time because that's what he does. <laughs> that, it doesn't matter who he's with, he's flirting with them. So they finally get there. They get to Green Hill Zone. Everything is good. Sonic has learned his lesson. They defeat Eggman the good old fashioned way. And that's it. And then they leave, of course, the ending pretty open and ambiguous for there to be more in the future. But for now, I think this is the end of Sonic Prime. So like I said, my favorite part of the show has got to be the designs and the subtle animations. The animations went hard on this to the point where I feel like it almost deserves an award. Like the just the technical animation side of this, like everything was so clean. The fights were so... Mm, mwah. And Shadow, in all of his subtle animations, the subtle little ear twitches, he did that with... <laughs> when he was carrying sonic over the barrier and he was just like oh snap like it was sonic was losing he was he was fading into non-existence and shadow was just like oh, oh let me hurry the fuck up <laughs> let me hurry the fuck up and he's like oh <laughs> those like little subtle moments i feel like especially for shadow is such a great thing because he doesn't talk a lot he doesn't talk a lot with his emotions he's more of like a actions kind of guy so seeing that reflected in his body language y'all ate y'all ate with that one you did, you did. Overall, this show is very cute. It's very cute. It's definitely something where I feel like you could put it on in the background. You don't have to be paying attention the entire time to understand what's going on. And I feel like that's just the pacing of the show. It's weird to me because like the more I learn about like the animation industry, it's like the less I see people have like full creative freedom with what they want to do which sucks but like to hear it really felt like while they had creative freedom maybe in the storylines and the character designs and all that they didn't have as much creative freedom with like the format of the show because the fact that there were eight episodes i don't think there needed to be sorry there were seven episodes there were seven episodes i keep thinking there were eight <laughs> i'm so sorry it's just it, it really dragged on that long i felt like there were eight episodes there were seven i felt like there could have been four I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like the first episode say, stays the same. The second and third episode could have been squashed together. Fourth and fifth episode could have been squashed together. And then that's one, two, three. And then you have your maybe second to last and then last episode. So maybe, so maybe five episodes. 
I just feel like two episodes too long on this. But overall, it's cute. It's definitely for its age demographic. I feel like a lot of people were maybe disappointed by the lack of like depth in the show or like going places in the show because it's not like a crazy adventure. It is a centralized, controlled story. And I actually like that. And I like that we're getting more of that in animation. I feel like it is a lot safer to have because again, you never know if a studio is just going to cancel you out of nowhere. Like I said, I knew that Sonic wasn't going to get canceled because it's Sonic. But you know other shows you never know so having a small centralized controlled story like this where there is absolutely going to be an ending that you can predict and is going to happen you're not really going too many different places it, it was good it was good for this but if we go somewhere in the future you know i do expect more and more adventurous in that type of area because i would love to see more different characters i would love to see different sonics like sonic was only held together because he had that prism energy inside of him that's why there was only one sonic prime now sonic is technically shattered if these other universes do exist i would like to see another sonic somewhere out there or multiple different sonics out there also silver i feel like he should have been in this show <laughs> and this just seems like his you know type of deal and i thought like maybe we we're gonna tease him at the every every end of every season i thought they were going to tease him at the end of the season i thought they were going to tease him they never did so I, I, <laughs> who knows we could get there we could get there in the future i think it's a good enough depth for what we got i think we did pretty well especially with the characterizations which is the thing that i care the most about right now when it comes to sonic because you can put sonic in anything put him in anywhere doing who knows what but it's the characterizations that i think are really going to drive home everything with sonic at least for me like the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, that is all about characterization right there. And I love it so much. Have I finished it? No, but I love it so much. You know, who knows? Maybe I will one day on Twitch.tv slash Ally Dreamer. Who knows? Well, so for better or worse, you don't need to pay attention to the show for the entire time. Uh, unless you're like me, who's crazy and needs to see every single subtle piece of animation that they put on Shadow no just me just me okay thank you for watching all the way to the end if you did you are a real one let me know how you felt about this show down below if you watched it if you didn't watch it either way thank you for watching this video if you did and well if you did you'd be y'all this has been a long day <laughs> if you are watching this video you're watching the video you, no, no anyway uh, <laughs> i did a little undertale yellow stream on my twitch channel ali dreamer twitch.tv slash ali dreamer and if you want to check out my next couple of streams i want to finish cult of the lamb and then hopefully after finishing cult of the lamb i can get pokemon scarlet and violet because i really want to play it i really want to play it so badly i've been wanting to play it since it came out and i just haven't had the money or the time Hopefully I can play it before school starts. <laughs> so also this is your last chance. I pushed back the dead fandoms video because I wanted to get this video out first because the show had just come out. But last chance, I'm for real doing it next week, the dead fandoms video. So if you wanna let me know any dead fandoms, this also includes, cause I saw some people being like, it's not really a dead fandom. If it's dead by internet standards, the same way that Tumblr is dead, but we all still use it, it's just not as crazy and as hype as it used to be. So if you feel like the fandom is like past its prime, past where all the controversies were happening, all the drama, like people outside of the fandom knowing about the fandom, if it's past that part of its life cycle, that is considered a dead fandom among the internet. So let me know if you have any of those down in the form below. And hey, hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. Love and peace.